All right, artists, this tutorial is on making a, an optical illusion paper weaving. And it is going to, there are two sort of styles or techniques that I'm going to demonstrate. One is this basic straight line and the other is the bubble or curved line. So um, well, let's get started right away. Optical illusions are things that sort of play tricks with our eyes, make our eye and our brains think differently about what we're seeing. Um, sometimes they'll make it make it flip flop back and forth. Um, so we are going to get together some materials and get started. So. First things that you need are some construction paper in complementary colors. So I have orange and blue, red and green, and then my other complementary color combination was the purple and yellow. So I need the complementary color, and both of these papers are the same size. These happen to be about 9 inches by 12 inches. Uh, but if you have a different sized paper and you don't have my template, then uh, go ahead and use what you have, right? We are artists and we are creative problem solvers. So if you do not have my template that has either the bubble template or the straight line on the other side, then you are going to want a ruler. I can measure in inches or centimeters. I think I used inches for this when I measured the template. You're going to want a marker or pencil to, that you're going to be able to see when you draw on your construction paper, so dark enough that you can see it, and scissors. That's pretty much it. All right, so let's get started. Uh, step one is that we are going to pick which paper is going to become the loom. The loom is the machine we weave on. And that will also have the warp. The warp is what is attached to the loom. And then we weave the weft through the warp. So for this demonstration, I am going to use uh, the red as my loom. No, I'm going to use the green as my loom. I'm going to use the green. And I'm going to turn the paper vertical so it's tall, right? Portrait orientation. And I'm going to fold it in half, top to bottom. So that's your hamburger style. And then I'm going to take my template, and I'm going to fold my template in half. And I'm going to do the bubble on this one. So I'm going to fold it in half so I see the bubble. It's got the bubble. Now, I want to match it up like a tent, so it's going to sit on top of the green paper like that. Okay. And then I am just going to um, fold under. And I actually don't want it to be quite up that high. So I'm just going to bring it down a little bit because it's kind of um, far away. I want it to be this distance right from the bottom. So I'm going to put a little mark there and a little mark there and then fold on this line. So this said open edge. So if I open my paper up, right, here's the fold, here's the open edge. So if you want to make sure that you're doing this on the correct, the correct side, this is how you double check. Open it up and I'm going to put the line right across there and then I write my name. Okay, because this is my loom. All right, so I want to put my numbers down at the bottom. You don't need to put one, two, three, four, five through seven. Um, if it helps you to do it, you, you're more than welcome to, but you don't need to. So then I'm going to fold that under and line it up with the fold. So the, the crease is right here, and I'm just going to come with a little dash. Okay, there's a there's a difference between a dot and a dash, and I'm going to make dashes, right? A dot would be like that, round, all right? So this is going to have uh, lines that are curved. So I'm going to start on the outside, and I'm going to make it kind of 
um, a dramatic curve here. And then I'm going to bring this side around. Okay, and then I'm going to come to the next set. Whoop, that is a little bit of a wobble. I'm not sure how I feel about that. I think I'm going to redash that, redraw that, and maybe this one's actually going to be, um, there we go. That, so if you're using marker and you make a mark like that, this is the back side of our paper. Really doesn't matter. Um, and then this center line ends up being straight. Okay. So um, it's only on half. We're going to be doing symmetry with this optical illusion. Um, and that's part of what make, what helps it create it is the symmetry. So fold it in half again. There should be nothing on that side. If I tip it open, my name, I'm, I'm pinching my name to tip it open. So double check that before you start cutting. Rotate it around. And I'm going to start cutting from the fold. And I want to cut straight on that dash. Okay. Uh, what will happen if you don't cut it straight here, if it curves at an angle a little bit, will be you'll get this peak, um, sort of like a heart or a point. Um, I feel like it makes it look almost like lips or a peanut. It's kind of fun. So if you do end up cutting with a little bit of an angle, um, it's not going to mess up your illusion. It will make it sort of unique. So just keep that in mind. It's not a crisis if that happens. Now, if I were doing the straight one, which you saw here, then I would just be following the template that's on the reversed side. And really, both of these are using the exact same steps. The difference is that instead of doing the curved lines I'm doing on the back here, instead of doing curved lines, I would have done straight lines to get this one this purple, right? So um, it goes this direction, right? So if you're choosing to do the straight line, that's, that's going to work just fine, okay? So now I have my loom and my weft. So loom is the machine, the weft is what we'll weave through, all right? So to cut our our or sorry, warp. Oh, man, all these W's. All right. The loom is the machine we weave on. The warp is attached to the loom. And now we are going to cut our weft. There we go. Whew. It's a tongue twister, people. Tongue twister, artists. So again, I'm cutting my paper, folding my paper in half. So it's like the, the green, right? And I'm just going to start with half of my paper. So I'm going to fold... I can fold it to the middle. I can fold it backwards. So I just folded top down and one more time. Um, that's going to give me about an inch and a half for each of these weft pieces. Okay. So um, I will start by cutting one at a time off. I don't want a whole lot of pieces rolling around at my table, getting lost, getting bent, getting stepped on, ripped. All right, red weft, green warp. Red weft over the green warp, under the green warp, over the green warp, under the green warp, over the green warp, under the green warp. And I'm lifting it up with my hand, right? Over the green warp, under, the last green warp. And then I'm going to push it down as close as I can get to the line that I drew. Cut my next piece. Oops. All right. Opposites. In order to make the checkerboard pattern, 
This time, I'm going to pick up this piece here, this border piece, under the green warp, over the green warp. Under the third, over the fourth. Under the fifth, over the sixth. Under the seventh, over the eighth. So you need to find for yourself what pattern is, what, what you say as you work, as you weave, um, what pattern will help you to remember the pattern. You're trying to make a checkerboard and you're trying to get it to lock into place, okay? If I do the exact same thing, right, two in a row, these will go over or under each other and it'll just keep pushing down and pushing down and I won't be filling up my warp with pieces. So my pattern's alternating. I'm alternating across, but I'm also alternating to the side, okay? So both directions have alternating patterns. So over one, under two, over three, under four, over five, under six, over seven, under eight. Okay, cut my fourth piece. Under one, over two, under three, over four. And we really need two hands to do it. Under five, over six, under seven, over eight. And I'm going to fold my last set in to the last four. You will have some leftover pieces because our two pieces of paper were the exact same size. So there should be leftover. And I'm just going back here and I'm making sure that I have pushed it nice and snug and tight. Over one, under two, over three, under four, over five, under six, over seven, under eight. It really does, um, you know, I'm saying this out loud for this demonstration, but uh, it really does help me as an artist, um, as I am working, to be saying this out loud, okay? Under, over, under, over, under, uh, over, under, over, okay? Um, so I have a very small amount left here. It looks like hmm, maybe less than half of a, of a stripe. So I'm just going to cut. I'm estimating. Okay. And let's see, this will be an under over. You want a little tiny bit of room here. Otherwise, you will rip your warp and your loom. Speed is not necessarily your friend. Um, that's how things get ripped. But tape, in that case, can be your friend. So if you rip something, just grab a piece of tape. If the tape is on the side with the marker and your name, um, it won't show up in your final piece when you turn it over. Okay. All right, that's really snug. So when I flip it over, and then I can check all my edges here. If you want to glue the flaps at the end down, you don't need to glue the middle. That's locked in. These flap around a little if you want to glue them down so that they're snug and not moving around. You could, but you don't need to. So happy weaving. I look forward to seeing your optical illusions with complementary colors. Have fun, take your time, and enjoy it.